Hello folks, welcome to Monday, October 26, and the Daily Word in the Crisis. Well, most of you know that Jesus had nothing good to say about the Pharisees. The Pharisees believed that they spoke the truth. In fact, they thought they were the arbiters of truth. And they'd convinced themselves. They believed that they alone had the right view of God and God's laws. Jesus spoke truth, but the Pharisees could not and would not receive who he was or what he taught. And so Jesus had this to say about them, John 8, 44. You are of your father the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Well, some of those, some of those who are promoting the narrative about the coronavirus about its dangers and the claims that the president and his team have been incompetent in the handling of it, actually believe what they're saying, just like the Pharisees believed what they were saying. That doesn't make any of it true. That doesn't make it any less a bundle of lies. Others are fully aware of the lies they've been telling about it. They'll do anything. They'll say anything it takes to take this president down and have their way to impose a leftist socialist system on this nation. In fact, their agenda is a direct reflection of the four... You need to listen to me in this. Their agenda is a direct reflection of the four biblical signs of the dominant influence of the spirit of Baal over a culture. I mean that. That's the biblical demon, Baal. The signs are... Number one, consuming self-focus. Number two, rampant sexual immorality and perversion. Number three, child sacrifice, as with our legalization of abortion on demand. And four, cutting, which has been an epidemic among young people. You saw the prophets of Baal dancing around, cutting themselves in the confrontation with Elijah. Every one of these is evident in our culture, dominating our thinking, the shape of our culture, and three of them characterize the platform of the Democratic Party, deeply influenced, literally, by the demon Baal, the same false god that led Israel astray, that led to the destruction of of Judah and Jerusalem in 586 BC, and the exile of the nation to Babylon for 70 years. This week, The county in which I live has reimposed level 3 lockdown edicts. And for what? Is this really justified? Is the virus really that dangerous? Do the numbers really add up? I'm talking about lies now. Scientists now tell us that the virus is attenuating. That's a medical term. Attenuating. In other words, it's becoming less dangerous, as is evidenced by the plummeting death rate from infections. You won't hear much about that from the mainstream media because they don't want you to know. They're influenced by the father of lies. Good news about the virus doesn't serve the agenda of the left that has tried to paint Donald Trump as irresponsible in the run-up to the election. The numbers provided by the government have never justified what we've been subjected to anyway. Those numbers are available to anybody who cares to do the math. You can find them on the CDC website and a number of other sources. Run the percentages. The number of deaths is against the number of cases. The number of cases as against the general population. The percentages are minuscule. So much of this has been inflated and falsified. Untold numbers of people who filled out paperwork but were never tested have been told they tested negative. I've heard the first-hand accounts. I've lost count of the first-hand reports I've received of this kind of abuse. I've spoken to others who tested positive, then negative, then inconclusive, all in the space of a day or so, and they never even had symptoms. Now a growing number of medical professionals are saying the test is unreliable. I've lost count of the reports, some of them first-hand from people close to me, of deaths from other causes that have been falsely reported as covid One, for example, was a little girl who drowned, but her death certificate read COVID. 
Case numbers are being inflated. COVID deaths are being inflated. It's lies. The devil is a liar and the father of lies, and we're under the worst assault of lying right now as a nation that I have ever seen in my 69 years. Am I angry? You bet. Just in the last week, I've seen several fitness centers in my area close permanently. Well, that's jobs permanently lost. That's fewer options for those who want to remain physically fit and healthy. I've seen numerous restaurants close in my area, and that's more jobs lost for those who can least afford it. The list goes on. And now the county in which I live has reimposed level three restrictions. Fitness centers that have remained open after the first set of closure orders are now ordered to close once more as of Wednesday of this week. People are told not to have gatherings of more than five people in their homes. Restaurants, those that remain, are under fresh restrictions after already being driven near bankruptcy under earlier lockdowns. I recently saw some figures coming from reputable European healthcare people. These are some of them. 78,000 care staff are against the vaccine. 89 to 94% of PCR tests, those are tests for COVID, render false positives. 89 to 94%. Herd immunity has already been reached in Sweden where there were no shutdowns. Epidemiologist Professor Woolhouse, that's an English government advisor, calls the lockdown a monumental mistake on a global scale. Among others, among others now, here in the United States, our own Dr. Scott Atlas, senior fellow with the Hoover Institute out of Stanford University, has called the shutdowns a huge mistake and has said that we need to be protecting the vulnerable while we open the rest of society and move toward herd immunity. They say you quarantine the sick and vulnerable, but you release the rest of society. Wake up, America, before it's too late. How many more lives must be destroyed? How many more businesses and jobs must disappear? How many more children don't get vaccinated because parents are made fearful? How much damage must be done to the mental, emotional, and educational health of our children as schools close? How much, how much more child abuse goes undiscovered because our children are not in school? How many more suicides happen as people lose hope? How much more domestic violence happens as tensions rise due to these stresses? Etc., etc., etc. Until we figure out that the overall damage done to the lives of people outweighs any danger from COVID 19. How many more constitutional freedoms will we allow to be eroded and taken from us by power mad governors and mayors who hand down edicts that are passed into law, or that are, I'm sorry, who hand down edicts that are not, that have not been passed into law by our elected representatives? This looks a lot like fascism, it's dictatorships. How long will we allow the voice of the church to be suppressed by means of unconstitutional restrictions on attendance and even on singing and worship in some places that are unfairly applied while radical left politicians and officials bless and support mass demonstrations and riots in our streets? Why is the church not regarded as an essential service while liquor stores and marijuana dispensaries are allowed to remain open? It's ridiculous. America. World. Stop listening to the lies. Rise up. Say no. We're being manipulated on a world scale. I'm convinced, fellow citizens, that your vote here in the United States is one way for you to say no. Vote out those who have been lying to you about the level of danger posed by this virus. The radical left now knows that all they have to do is declare a national emergency and your guaranteed constitutional rights become irrelevant. They know that you'll willingly surrender them because you've done it. Rise up. Say no. Stop listening to the narrative of fear. Do the math, even using the inflated numbers, and you'll find that the percentages just don't add up to the danger they say it is. I've been a pastor full-time, 44 years. I've seen flu seasons that were so bad that fully 30% of my congregation were out with it. 
I recall seasons when I myself got the flu and it was so bad I thought I'd die and seriously wanted to. But never did we shut down the nation over it. And yet, you know, as my church has defied shutdown orders and ignored restrictions from the very start of all this, we've not seen a single case of COVID among us. That ought to make you think. I've spoken with those outside of our flock who have actually contracted the virus and actually had symptoms. They either tell me it's a light cough, perhaps a low fever, a headache, and some discomfort, or they tell me that it's like a bad flu, but nothing more. I do know of people that have died of it, but in every case, there were serious comorbidity factors that would have been a problem in any normal flu season. Wake up, people. Before it's too late, we're awash in lies from the father of lies. Pray. Pray diligently. And by all means, vote. God bless you all. Have a great week.